from the Single Malt Whiskey Club here. And for October, we have, for the first time in about three years, I think, two whiskies from the spiritual homes of whiskey, Ireland and Scotland, in the one month. And for the first time ever, we've got no bottle of the actual malt of the month. Yes, that's right. Of the two bottles of Waterford that got sent to me, of course, it was the malt of the month I needed for photos and this video that broke in transit. So, our malt of the month is from Irish Terroir Evangelists Waterford with their Nocro 1.1. Exclusive in Australia to the Single Malt Whiskey Club. The optional extra is a 15-year-old limited edition from Highland Distillery Deanston, the tequila cask finish. Now, we here at the Single Malt Whiskey Club have always championed the cause of transparency in the labelling of all spirits. After all, it's only fair that we know what we're getting and where it's coming from. And if there is one distillery that takes this type of transparency very seriously, it has to be Irish distillery Waterford. So here's the other bottle I've got, which isn't our feature bottle, but you'll see that there is a terroir code here. So if you type this terroir code into the Waterford website, it will give you all the details about that whiskey and the farm the barley came from. And I do mean all the details. Everything from soil analysis and pictures, casks and cask breakdown percentages. They've even got a sound file of the farm so that you can close your eyes and be where it was grown as you sip your dram. And yes, I did say farm it was grown on, not farms, as each whiskey in the Waterford Single Farm Origin range is, as the name suggests, made from barley grown on a single farm. And as I said in the intro, Waterford is all about terroir when it comes to whiskey. I guess in simplest terms, terroir would be the taste of a place in wines and spirits. And Waterford take this to the very extreme by producing whiskies from individual farms barley. So this month's Nocro 1.1, not that this is a Nocro, <laughs> this is a different Waterford single farm origin, but the Nocro 1.1 uh, was grown on the Nocro farm east of the River Barrow by farmer Kenneth Ashmore. So using the Terra code, that's on the bottle shows us when it was sown, when it was harvested, malted and distilled amongst a whole heap of other stuff. So in summary, the Nocro 1.1 barley was harvested in August of 2015, fermented for 145 hours and distilled during the week of the 14th to 20th of March in 2016. It was matured for four years, five months and one day in a mix of US First Fill Oak, 34%, US Virgin Oak, 20%, Premium French Oak, 23%, and Vin du Naturel, a sort of sweet wine, 23%. So then it was bottled at 50% ABV on the 30th of November, 2020. So let's have a look at these lovely bottles that Waterford put out in. I don't often pay a lot of attention to packaging in these videos. But seriously, look at that. It's, it's a thing of beauty. And Waterford, you'll notice, go the opaque blue because they don't want to make the color of the whiskey the main selling point because, as we all know, color really is not indicative of age or quality or maturation. Different barrels have different reactions and give different colors. So once again, this bottle is actually a different expression from the single farm, orange, farm origin range. This is the Belly Kilcaven farm. But luckily, but luckily, I still had about half of the very generous sample bottle that they sent me, which I chose the whiskey from, to write my notes on. And I've got just, as you can see, just a tiny bit left in there. So here it is. I've saved this tiny drop just for this video. I'm hoping another bottle would get here, but it hasn't. All right. So let's have a taste. So it's hard to see. It's a sort of a yellowy hay color. On the nose, oh, there's like warm banana bread with melting butter. 
those floral jasmine notes and there's that fresh wet cast, cut grass sort of notes there as well. Oh. Mm, yeah, I mean, on the palette. Oh. It's a lovely mouth coating viscosity with a very mild pepper. Very well integrated 50% ABV. It's just a bit, there's a fruit mince. A little bit of gingery sort of heat there in the fruit mints and there's a vanilla sweetness with a sort of butterscotch sweet center to it all. Oh yeah, there's not much, so I don't only get one chance to do this. The finish, hang on. Mm. It's it's peppery and ginger. Peppery and ginger spice around a sort of a core, a caramel, espresso, and dark chocolate with a a lingering, almost salty sort of finish to it, I guess. So there's no big overpowering cask notes here. It's really all about the spirit itself. The cask, of course, imparts some notes, those vanillas, for example, but it's the tempering of the spirit that the wood provides here. I guess if it was a meal, you'd sort of describe it as delicious in its rustic authenticity. It's a bloody good. It's yum. Mm, yum. Or oh, I've got to wait for my bottle to show up here. And now, our optional extra, a Scottish whiskey from the Highlands, Deanston. This one is a 15-year-old tequila cask finish. Yep, the ultimate answer to what happens when a Mexican and a Scotsman go into a bar. Um, there's been a growing interest in agave and tequila cask matured whiskies recently, so we thought we'd investigate this sort of newish phenomenon in ageing. Deanston are uh, one of a couple of Scottish distilleries known for having a waxy quality to their spirit, um, Clanellish being the other. The tequila casks um, have aged agave from the highland region of Yalisco, I believe, in Mexico. Um, the spirit in this area is renowned for its fruity and um, floral character. So I guess we'll see if that translates. So 13 years in traditional oak hogsheads, uh, then two years finishing in the agave cask. So the fruity floral notes delivered from this cask selection complements the citrusy, waxy character of the Deanston, producing a pretty phenomenal final product. So let's have a taste. Nose. Hmm. So it's tart fruits, kiwi, pineapple, raspberry. There's vanilla, sort of a vanilla malted milkshake and almost a savory note there as well. Wow. On the, uh, on the palate. Hmm. Wow. Ah, I see that waxiness they speak of. It's it's very mouth coating as you'd expect. Mm. It's like an initial wave of sweet sultanas and raisins and vanilla, which then becomes dry and sort of slightly astringent. A bit like sherbet, in fact. Sweet yet sour. The finish. Mm. Yeah, that waxy quality mm, really becomes noticeable as the dram swirls around and slowly starts to fade. It's, mm, it's a thick coating of slightly astringent, salivatory scrumptiousness, I guess. You think it's fading, but then it comes back as you sort of lick and, mm, and suck that totally tantalizing spirit from your teeth, it seems. This is a delicious and very, very Moorish whiskey that hits all the sweet spots for me. Nice and sweet up front, Palette cleansingly dry at the tail. The mouthfeel is incredible and waxy is a perfect description. Mm. That spirit just clings to your palate for dear life. Oh, yum. So that's it for October. The Nocro 1.1 from Irish Terroir Evangelists Waterford. Or oh, the sweet fruity waxiness that is the Deanston Tequila Cask Finish. I know what I'm getting, and it ain't just one of them. I'm Brad Wright from the Single Malt Whiskey Club. Until next month, slam for bar.